I think from my point of view, the most significant recent development would be in the diagnosis of the vascular problems in diabetic retinopathy. So I think it is, must be OCT angiography. I think development of uh, recent advances in OCT angiography in deciding what the perfusion uh, is of the retina is helping us to decide which patients are most amenable to treatment and what sort of treatments are actually working when we do treat people with diabetic retinopathy. Because as you know, diabetic retinopathy now in the advanced world is the probably the second most common cause of blindness after macular degeneration. And all these uh, research developments in OCT angiography will help even people with uh, diabetic macu uh, macular degeneration. So I think OCT angiography is definitely something that at the moment is not available to all units and departments, but I think it will become one of the standard uh, investigative modules that we'll have, modalities that we'll have. Well, the challenges in diabetic retinopathy is really, um, it's the usual challenge from a public health point of view, patients turning up late. That still is a problem despite uh, all the screening programs, despite all the education that goes on, you know, it's, 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 the education is usually nationwide for diabetic patients to get regular checkups. And the problem is people do turn late. And when they do turn late and they need something more than laser treatment, or control of the diabetes. I think one of the main problems is deciding which patients really are amenable to, to surgery, which patients are going to do well. We still do have the problem that you operate on some patients which you think you're wasting your time, but you want to have, try and help them, and they turn out with a good result, and then you have patients who you feel should have a good result, don't really have a good result, despite having fantastic anatomic results, the functional result might not be good. And again, I turn back to OCT angiography because that maybe is something that's going to help us to really decide which patient would be best for treatment and where we would expect the best prognosis. I think in our field, it's obviously going to be something like gene therapy and stem cells because really, ultimately, the treatments that we are doing are really a, a stopgap to something which would be much more effective. Uh, and ultimately, even with the best surgical results in patients with advanced diabetic eye disease, you're still going to have the problem that the vision is going to be suboptimal. So I think stem cells where you are going to replace tissue which is non-functional is really the future. But as you know, stem cell uh, developments in stem cells is taking a long time because of many different uh, uh, problems with, with, with its development. But I think stem cell uh, uh, injections will be something for the future. I personally am really looking forward to that, to be able to help my patients more. Well, I, I really come to this meeting. This, is, this meeting is a multidisciplinary meeting, so you have all the subspecialities. So I, I'm more interested really in this meeting in going to uh, other subspeciality uh, um, uh, lectures and, and symposia, particularly the neuro-ophthalmology uh, meetings, and I also like to go to cataract refractive. I think the meeting has many interesting facets but uh, the most important thing that this meeting is one for comprehensive ophthalmologists but also it's a very useful meeting for the specialist ophthalmologist who wants to uh, get up to date with other specialists because ultimately we are ophthalmologists you know we all trained as ophthalmologists and not just as a cataract surgeon or a vr surgeon or a, a pediatric ophthalmology surgeon so i think this meeting is particular so I, i'm interested in most most of the uh, um, program Nothing in particular. Yes, I think that this meeting has, over the years, I've been involved in the organization of this meeting for the last four meetings, and over the years I've noticed a stronger participation from the young ophthalmologists. You know, the SOE now has its own young ophthalmologist section. 
who are very, very active. And I think this, they like this meeting because, as I said, it's a multidisciplinary meeting. So these are people who have not yet been tunneled into one speciality or the other. So it really just opened their mind to what is available. And it's, I think, for the young ophthalmologists, I, I tell them, look, go to as many different of the subspeciality symposia as you can, because it's here that you're going to become interested in one of the specialities. But always remember that you're an ophthalmologist. Comprehensive ophthalmology is very important. I think subspecialization is useful, but never forget that you're a comprehensive ophthalmologist and should keep up to date with most of the speciality. We're already quite a small speciality ophthalmology when you think of general surgery or some other surgical speciality. So I think what's important at this meeting is try and get as much exposure as you, get, as you can.